Hi, this is Lawfully Creative, and this is the podcast of our law firm, Crefovi. And today we are talking about the legal saga, Dure versus um, Daniel Dure versus uh, Mr. Catalan, the uh, uh, conceptual artist. So my take on this story, is that it is a missed opportunity for Daniel Dre and his legal team to um, uh, capitalize on the collaborative art uh, works legal framework. And I'm going to explain to you why now. So it's the story of a baffling legal case where neither of the parties come out on top, having lost either their reputation or money, or both in the process. Daniel Dre lost an occasion to make a splash in the art world because his statement of claims was extremely poor, uh, poorly drafted and badly structured, the statement of claim that is sent to, um, uh, to the co-defendants. And Emmanuel Perrotin and Marie de Catalan came out as a bunch of amateurs no more than unsophisticated stakeholders of a contemporary art business from this legal saga. So here's how this case, this legal case, could have boosted the ego and pockets of Daniel Dre and adorned the respective blasons of Mr. Perrotin and uh, Maurizio Catalan. So what are the facts in this, um, in this legal saga? Well, Daniel Dre is a French sculpture of wax um, uh, of wax sculptures, and um, and um, in particular, he, he he was on a retainer <laughs> for the Musée Grévin, which is the Paris equivalent to the uh, Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in London. And um, while he was doing all his business for the Musée Grévin and making all these wax uh, sculptures, he was contacted by Emmanuel Perrotin who is a uh, Paris-based art dealer specializing in selling contemporary art. Uh, Perrotin is one of the top uh, stalwarts in the contemporary art scene in, in France, in Paris in particular, and he started his gallery at 21 years old, to his credit. Uh, so he's got good intentions and he's been doing it day in, day out for a long time. But every time something legal happens, he's not very good. So anyway, Perrotin, this gallerist, contacted uh, Mr. Drouet in uh, uh, 1999. And according to Mr. Drouet, as set out in, in Drouet's statement of claim, it was at the request of Maurizio Catalan that... Uh, uh, the, uh, Emmanuel Perrotin contacted Daniel Dre. So who is Maurizio Catalan? Maurizio Catalan is an Italian artist with a reputation as a provocateur and outside the box thinker. Um, and uh, um, I actually had uh, the opportunity of meeting uh, Maurizio Catalan at the Fondation Bayeler in, uh, in Basel uh, a few years ago. And he's, he's got a very dry sense of humor. He doesn't uh, shy away from controversy when I ask him about uh, one of his cultures, him, but we are going to mention him uh, being a representation of a small Hitler. Uh, uh, he, he, and I asked him, you know, why, why did you, uh, why did you, what was the message you wanted to uh, convey through this uh, sculpture of this uh, genuflexed um, small version of Hitler? And he was like, is this an interview? Uh, super aggressive it was. Um, so anyway, so yes, Marita Catalan is definitely an outside the box thinker and also someone who, who doesn't um, uh, shy away from stunts and, um, and um, uh, you know, basically raising his, uh, his profile through, through uh, uh, provocation. And um, uh, Perrotin is actually um, uh, uh, Marie de Catalan's gallerist in France. Okay, so um, according to Daniel Drouet, it was at the request of Marie de Catalan that 
Mr. Perrotta contacted him in order for uh, Mr. Dure to execute several wax sculptures between 1999 and 2006. So these uh, various wax sculptures are La Nonna Orra, for example, one of them, which is a representation of uh, the uh, late Pope John Paul II being on, on the floor being sort of uh, um, taken out by a, by a, a, um, uh, an, aster an, aster an, an ast asteroid, astero asteroid, I don't know how you say this in English, asteroid, so some, some space uh, rock coming uh, coming into the um, into the uh, into Earth, and so there's also La Rivoluzione Siamo Noi, which is the second artwork made by uh, Daniel Dure uh, uh, through Perrotin and for um, Catalan, and it represents um, Catalan, a small version of Catalan, which is basically hung on a on a on a hanger on a coat hanger. Uh, like this, and so you can see all these pictures actually of uh, of the various uh, eight sculptures made by Dre on uh, on uh, um, Google Image, and I linked all the Google images on our article, which we published on crefovi.com and uh, crefovi.fr. Uh, yesterday, so um, there's also him, as I said, this small picture of uh, a small um, sculpture of Hitler, which is genuflexed and usually facing a corner as if he had been punished by the teacher. And um, there are others called Frankie and Jamie, Stephanie, Betsy, etc., all made of wax, obviously. So um, by letters from the early 2000s, uh, addressed to Mr. Perrotin and his art gallery, uh, gallery company, uh, Perrotin Gallery, Daniel Dure requested that all distribution of his artworks mention his name as the sculptor and director of wax sculptures in the same way that the name of a photographer, author of a distributed pictures is usually set out in a magazine. And uh, I'm, I'm quoting here from his uh, statement of claim. So um, he received no reply from Mr. Perrot Perrotin to his letters. Then between October 2016 and January 2017, uh, the Paris Museum called La Monnaie de Paris hosted an exhibition entitled Catalan, Not Afraid of Love, which featured four of the um, previously mentioned artworks, so in, in La Nonna Ora, La Rivoluzione Siamo Noi, Him, and the Young Catalan of uh, Rotterdam, uh, together we're going to call them the litigious artworks. These four artworks we're going to refer to from now on the litigious artworks. So again, when they were exhibited, these litigious artworks at the La Monnaie de Paris exhibition, there were no references to uh, Daniel Dure, not, notwithstanding his, uh, his, about, his, his previously mentioned remarks and, and requests. So arguing that his quality as exclusive author, I quote him here, uh, of litigious artworks was yet again unrecognized, Mr. Dure filed some summons against Mr. Perrotin and his art gallery, so the uh, uh, Perrotin Gallery, and as well as against Mr. Perrotin's publishing business, which is called Turenne Edition SIRL, and also the French Museum La Monnaie de Paris, with the Paris um, High Court, which is called Tribunal de Grande Instance and was since renamed Tribunal Judiciaire of Paris, for copyright infringement as well as counterfeiting. So by act executed by a bailiff in December 2018, La Monnaie de Paris filed some summons against Maritza Catalan and his Italian company Magis SRL in forced intervention. So this is a process under French law called intervention forcée, forced intervention, where you actually call a third party into a claim because uh, you as a defendant deem that this third party has something to do with the matter at hand and um, this third party's liability may be triggered, should be triggered by this, this uh, court claim. So um, La Monnaie de Paris, uh, sent some summons to Marie de Catalani's company for forced intervention, as well as a guarantee of uh, 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 to pay the, any potential legal fees due by uh, La Monnaie de Paris to Daniel Dury uh, uh, through the outcome uh, after the outcome of his uh, of his legal case. 
and that was pursuant to the terms of the partnership loan and copyright assignment agreement that had been entered into between La Monnaie de Paris and, uh, and um, uh, Maurice de Catalan in, uh, in the recent past in relation to that exhibition. So what were the uh, procedure, um, what were the legal proceedings like? What was the procedure aspect of this legal saga? Well, uh, the two above previously mentioned legal proceedings, so for copyright in infringement and uh, for forced intervention and guarantee were joined by the court in January 2019, so that they would look at those two cases together. By judgment dated 28th of February 2022, the Paris Tribunal Judiciaire rejected the request of inadmissibility for lack of quality to defend, raised by Emmanuel Perrotin and his gallery, as well as by Turenne Edition SIRL against Daniel Jure. So, um, in plain English, the French court and French judge decided that this case had to proceed to uh, the trial phase and uh, could not be just, um, you know, um, basically terminated even before any trial, any form of trial would take place. So then it proceeded on to trial and on the 8th of July 2022, after a hearing held on the 13th of May 2022, which I understand was a pretty brief hearing, the Paris Tribunal Judiciaire handed down its judgment, which you can have access to uh, through a PDF uh, attachment on our articles published yesterday on crefreview.com and crefreview.fr, so this judgment from um, the 8th of July 2022 set out that Daniel Drury had not reversed the lawful presumption of authorship granted to Maritza Catalan by the provisions set out in Article L. 113.1 of the French Intellectual Property Court Code, the IPC, the French Intellectual Property Code, pursuant to which Mr. Catalan was deemed to be the sole author of the litigious artworks, since such artworks had been divulged in the public domain exclusively under the name of Maritza Catalan. While also the uh, judgment said that while Daniel Drury made, made the wax cultures, the litigious artworks were much more than these mere wax sculptures, and that it was Maritza Catalan who made all decisions and gave all directives relating to the scenography, the positioning in the space, the lighting, the destruction of various pieces of furniture on which those wax sculptures were placed for each one of the litigious artworks. Moreover, the judgment set out that Danielle Drury did not file any summons against Maurizio Catalan. Therefore, he could not argue in such legal proceedings about some rights aiming at evicting Maurizio Catalan from the benefit of a presumption of ownership without Mr. Catalan being part of those proceedings. In addition, the judgment mentioned that Maritza Catalan was not a principal defendant to the joint proceedings, but was only brought in as a guarantor and forced intervening party for La Monnaie de Paris, the French Museum. Therefore, no legal nexus was created by such forced intervention between Daniel Jure and Maritza Catalan. Consequently, the judgment went on, and since Mr. Drury did not file any summons against Mr. Catalan, this presumed offer of a litigious artworks against who he argued the ownership of the rights on the litigious artworks, Daniel Drury must be declared inadmissible in all his claims for copyright counterfeiting. And finally, the warranty claim raised by La Monnaie de Paris against Marie de Catalan and his company Magius, SRL, without any cause, would not be reviewed. So that was, um, in a nutshell, the various arguments set out by the French, three French judges who handed down the judgment on the 8th of July 2022. 
In its judgment, the tribunal sentenced Daniel Duray to support his own expenses and legal costs, of course, but also to pay 10,000 euros to Emmanuel Perrotin, his art gallery, and Turin Edition uh, Sahel, as well as another 10,000 euros to La Monnaie de Paris, pursuant to Article 700 of the French Civil Procedural Code. Mr. Duret also had to pay full costs to the law firm of uh, Mr. Perrotin, his art gallery and Turin Edition, pursuant to Article 699 of the French Civil Procedural Code. So what information, what is the substance of this, uh, of this case and what can we understand from it, from, from it and in a thorough analysis? Well, Mr. Dure uh, needs to reverse the authorship presumption first and foremost. While reading, while I was reading the judgment and the legal arguments uh, developed by the claimant, so Mr. Dure and his counsel, uh, Jean-Baptiste Bourgeois, I was baffled by the lack of legal sophistication of such arguments. Firstly, Mr. Drury alleged in his statement of claims that he was the exclusive offer, I quote him here, of a litigious artworks, as if his litigious artworks were solely constituted by the wax sculptures made by him under the directives of Mr. Catalan. In this day and age, a large portion of contemporary art is made up by conceptual art. Conceptual art is a branch of modern art and contemporary art, which is defined not by the aesthetics properties of the artworks, but solely by the concept or ideas of art, which with the ready-made created by Marcel Duchamp being the epitome of conceptual art. So nowadays, a large portion of contemporary art is made up by conceptual art, where basically, the art is mostly the idea, the emotions that um, the, the artwork conveys. Mr. Catalan is recognized as a master of conceptual art, whose artworks are mostly valued for the message and uh, as well as the emotions that they convey or trigger in the viewer, rather than the aesthetics characteristics of such works. Most telling is the controversy and mixed emotions created by one of the litigious artworks, him, so still this uh, um, sculpture of Hitler in, uh, in a, in a sm small form, like, in a child form, when it was exhibited in Warsaw's Jewish ghetto, while it represents the small version of the anti-Semitic di dictator who attempted to erase the Jewish race from planet Earth before and during World War II. Adolf Hitler, with many of the killings taking place in Warsaw's ghetto at the time. So that really triggered a, a big controversy when uh, Catalan ex exhibited him in, uh, in the uh, Jewish ghetto of Warsaw. So that, that is an example that shows, you know, this, this sort of punchy strategy that Catalan has, which is uh, the basis of conceptual art. Mischievous Marisa Catalan conveys a message, triggers violent emotions via his artworks, a lot of which are not made up of wax sculptures, such as Trotsky's Ballad, made in 1996, and naturalized male ostrich, male, uh, made in 1997, which are based on taxidermied animals, so a horse for the former and an ostrich for the latter. Or, Love, L-O-V-E, made in 2011, which is an 11 meter, meter white marble sculpture middle finger sticking straight up from an otherwise fingerless hand pointing away from Borsa Italia, it, Italiana, so the Italian stock market in Milan. Okay, so it's basically a, a middle finger sticked up and made of white marble. Okay, so Catalan uses other... Um, other channels of a medium to uh, to create his artworks. Uh, 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 not only wax, he also uses taxidermied animals as well as um, as well as uh, marble. Therefore, Mr. Juris claims that he may be the sole and exclusive offer of a four litigious artworks. I just they don't you know hold muster. They 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 don't hold water, and denote a complete lack of understanding or desire to understand conceptual art. 
Secondly, even the judges in the uh, in their judgment from the 8th of uh, July 2022 were actually more understanding of what conceptual art is than uh, than Daniel Dury and his counsel. It was just baffling. <laughs> uh, well, they, they suppose these French, three French judges are supposed to know absolutely almost uh, uh, hardly anything about about art, contemporary art, and conceptual art. So, secondly, Mr. Dury and his counsel did not file any summons against Marita Catalan directly. They filed only against this art dealer, this art dealer's gallery business and art book publishing business. So Emmanuel Perrotta, Perrotta Gallery, and Turenne Publishing SIL. What a rookie's mistake. It's always better to file summons against more people than less people. And that was such a rookie's mistake to actually not... Uh, um, not include them. It is evident that if one's legal claims are the, that one is the author of an artwork in lieu and place of someone else, one must file some summons against that someone else who has a presumption of being the sole author of that artwork in court. This lack of summons against Marita Catalan by Daniel Drury and his counsel did not deter them, though, from requesting in the statement of claims, Maurizio Catalan to pay Daniel Duray the sum of 100,000 euros for damages in alleged breach of a right to authorship, own, uh, yeah, authorship of uh, or paternity of the litigious artworks, as well as always associate the name of Daniel Duray with the litigious artworks and a penalty of 5,000 euros by infringement served and set out on all media of any nature, and in particular on the sites dot 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 peroton.com and dot 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 store dot peroton.com and on dot 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 money de paris.com, the name and quality of offer of Daniel Jure upon the distribution and reproduction of a litigious artworks jointly with Emmanuel Peroton, his art gallery, Edition Turenne, and La Monnaie de Paris. So this is just baffling. The Daniel Perrotin and his counsel don't file some summons against Marie to Catalan. However, in their statement of claims, they still ask Marie to Catalan to actually comply with a uh, um, their request set out in the statement of claims. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, if his counsel is a professional lawyer, I, I don't know what he's been doing for the last six, 50 years of his years uh, of his of his legal career, to be honest. This is just rookie's mistake, like basic rookie's mistake. This lack of basic understanding of the French civil procedural code and rules is so gross, so gross. It is actually shameful that a Paris lawyer, but to which I also belong in France, allegedly steeped in intellectual property, was even allowed to send such a statement of claims to the Tribunal Judiciaire de Co-Defendants. Of course, it was very easy for the co-defendants and their counsel to eat Daniel Dure and his lawyer alive in their response to the statement of claims, les conclusions de, de, en réponse, especially since Mr. Drury and his counsel disregarded a cornerstone principle of French copyright law enshrined in Article L113.1 of the French Civil uh, Intellectual Property Code. The quality of offer belongs, except in case of evidence to the contrary, to the persons and of the name of which the work is disclosed. Okay, so there is a presumption that the person and of the name of, of, of which uh, the work is disclosed is the offer. Okay, if Mr. Drouet wants to have any chance to win this case at all, first he must demonstrate that such presumption that Maritza Catalan is the offer of litigious artworks is, is, um, can be reversed. Um, since these works were disclosed solely under the name of Marita Catalan as offer. That requires skill and a thorough knowledge and understanding of copyright law. Mr. Drury could argue and prove that Marita Catalan never gave him any directives and instructions to create the wax sculptures used in the litigious artworks. He could even say and prove that he never had any dealings and contacts with Marita Catalan or communications going through Emmanuel Perrotin and his art gallery, 
which would further show that there was no subordination link and therefore no employer-employee relationship or not even a uh, principal and contractor relationship between Mr. Dure and Mr. Catalan. Daniel Drury could also argue, in order to reverse this presumption of off, uh, authorship, that he is the sole author of a wax sculptures, which along with other creative elements provided and decisions made by Maurizio Catalan, such as the scenography, the lighting, the destruction of pieces of furniture uh, on which the uh, wax sculptures were placed and displayed, would constitute the um, litigious artworks. So by that, I mean that Daniel Dury could say, yes, I made the wax sculptures and I am the author of the wax sculptures. However, the sculptures, the litigious artworks are more than just these wax sculptures because they um, comprehend, they cover more than just the wax sculptures, they cover also the scenography, the um, um, arranging of the display, the, uh, the lighting, and also the destruction of pieces of furniture on, on which the uh, uh, wax sculptures were, were placed and, and, and displayed. And therefore, therefore we, this comes to the collaborative artwork. And so this is where I think Mr. Dure should bank on, on being a co-author in a collaborative artwork, as opposed to claiming that he's the exclusive offer. Because saying that he's the exclusive offer doesn't hold water. I mean, Catalan has done also, and, and mostly most of the work is he's come up with the idea, he's explained everything that had to uh, um, had to be made to, to Daniel Dure, is 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 conceptualized the whole thing. So I was also baffled to read in the judgment from the 8th of July, 2022, that Daniel Drury and his counsel never thought it necessary to clarify that the litigious artworks were collaborative works, i.e. some works which creations were made jointly by several natural persons pursuant to article L113, a hyphen two of the uh, French intellectual property code. This more realistic assertion would have automatically granted Mr. Drouet the status of offer of the litigious artworks and allowed him to claim a share in the royalties earned on the exploitation of a copyright by Maurice Catalan and his gallerist Emmanuel Perrotin, in particular on the reproduction right used to publish the catalogue catalog of the exhibition at La Monnaie de Paris, probably also some postcards and potentially, you know, some, some sort of stationery and all of the merchandises featuring the litigious artworks. So through that, if you had said, you know, I'm a co-offer in a, in a collaborative artwork, you would have said, I want to have a share of a royalty. That would have been a much more sensible and, you know, financially remunerative approach. But no, he didn't do that. Well, Mr. Drury and his counsel made a show in their statement of claims of requiring the co-defendants to, I quote here, provide all documents and informations that they held, allowing to value the economic prejudice of Mr. Drury, I even number of visits to the pages of the web internet website dot 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 perrotin.com in the last five years, the number of visits to the pages of the internet site dot 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 perrotin.com specifically targeting Mr dedicated to Mr. Catalan during the last five years, as well as disclosing the commissions received by Mr. Catal Mr. Perrotin and his gallery during the last five years in lending and selling works created by Mr. Drury and attributed to Mr. Catalan, as well as uh, information on the turnover made by Mr. Perrotin, his gallery and his publishing business, Turin Edition, on the sale of books and artworks in relation to Maurice Catalan from the store dot, 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 Perrotin .com during the last five years. Actually, Daniel Drury and his counsel never demonstrated and gave any evidence that Mr. Drury was a co-offer let alone the exclusive offer of a litigious, litigious artworks in the first instance. That doesn't make any sense. No wonder that the judges were tough on Daniel Drury, sentencing, sentencing him to pay 10,000 euros to each co-defendant, except Mr. Catalan, his company Magis SRL, who did not ask for such compensation under Article 
700 of the French Civil Procedural Code. So this will teach Mr. Drury and his counsel a hard lesson because issuing such statement of claims, which is so clearly devoid of any sound legal reasoning and arguments and completely lacks any evidence relating to any of his unsound legal points, is just a waste of everybody's time, money and energy. And yet another way to suffocate the court docket of the Paris Tribunal Judiciaire, who is, which, is trail, which is still trailing a backlog of pre-COVID-19 cases um, to adjudicate in its midst. So I doubt that Mr. Dre will appeal and or use the services of the same lawyer should he decide to pursue his claims of infringe, copyright infringement against Marita Catalan. However, the lesson for the co-defendants and artists such as Maurizio Catalan in particular is that they need to put in place contracts. Yes, 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 with a contractors and freelancers before instructing them to do any work, which explicitly, clearly and transparently set out who owns the copyright of any artwork or part of the artwork created by the freelancer, the contractor. In this state of affair, Mr. Perrotin, his gallery, and Maurice Catalan come across as a bunch of total amateurs who dabble in the art business like mischievous schoolboys through and through, and that tarnished their reputation in the process. They, why don't they have any contracts in place? Hello, this is the 21st century. This comes back to the message I have conveyed time and time again with respect to the art sector, first in relation to art auctions and the um, ongoing issue of mismatch in uh, pre-sale descriptions, and second, about the use of arbitration to improve the security of art sales and transactions. Contracts must be systematically drawn in a clear, transparent, and straightforward manner and signed by all parties before and concomitantly to any art transaction taking place. On this note, I am done, and I thank you very much for your attendance. If you want to read the written version of the uh, of our thought leadership content, do have a look at our latest publications on crayfovy.com slash store. You can actually subscribe to a 100 pounds membership there if you want to read the content in English. And should you prefer to read the written content in French, you can go on crayfovy.fr slash magasin and uh, subscribe to a 100 euros annual membership fee to, uh, to do that. On this note, thank you, and um, I shall see you soon. Bye for now.